how have the colors and the Apple logo changed over the years? Let's find out on this new episode of Color Commentators, presented by Pros Pondering Paint. It's 1976, and three young men were trying to build a business in the only free spot they had. Ironically, it was the same location where countless bands got their start and where bad boys from 1980s sitcoms would live. You guessed it, in Mom's Garage. Meet Steve Jobs, Ronald Wayne, and Steve Wozniak. They had a mind for business and a love for computers. Computers were not super popular, and most of them you needed to do a lot of assembly yourself. These men saw the future and needed to be part of it. So they wanted to make a computer that was less scary and more accessible to everyday households. They assembled the game-changing Apple One computer. All you needed was a keyboard and a monitor, and you were off and running. Soon, these were sold out, and the boys knew they were on to something big. The next step, they needed to become legit. So, on April 1st, 1976, Apple Computers was officially founded. As with today, a company needs a catchy logo. The forgotten founder of Apple, Ronald Wayne, sketched this logo. It had Isaac Newton sitting under a tree with an apple hanging over his hat. Around the picture read, a mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought alone. This quote was written 126 years before they borrowed it and put it to work for Apple computers. Now, personally, I have to say, the artwork here is incredible. Ron is a talented artist, but if you wanna portray your business as new and cutting edge, this old school drawing and quote is the exact opposite of what was needed. Both the logo and Ron Wayne didn't last long in the company. Meet Rob Janoff. In 1977, he came in and was tasked with creating a new logo. It needed to be ready for the launch of the Apple II computer, which was coming out in April of 1977. He bought a bunch of apples and started sketching. In two weeks, he created the iconic logo and made sure that there was a bite taken out of it so that people would know that it was an apple and not a cherry or a tomato. But metaphorically, the bite was also meant to symbolize biting into the knowledge that the users would get out of this computer. When he shared this with his workmates, they told him that the word bite, spelled B-Y-T-E, is also a computer term. It's a unit of data that is eight binary digits long. When he heard this, Rob must have been floored. But when a coincidence like this happens, you know that it just solidifies that this logo was absolutely perfect. The different color stripes was meant to symbolize that the Apple II was gonna have a fully colored display. Steve Jobs wanted the green color on the top of the logo because that's where the leaf was located. This logo was used for 22 years. Fast forward to 1998, and a lot had changed for this company. Their stock was down, and Apple just wasn't innovating like it did before. But after 12 years, Steve Jobs was coming back, and they needed to rebrand. They chose a translucent blue logo to prep for the new millennium. But whenever you're replacing an icon, like that rainbow logo that they had used for so long, well, people just might not like it. And that's exactly what happened here. This logo color didn't even last the year. So very quickly, they pivoted to this logo. Simple, sleek, and black. They used it until 2001. Even though it didn't last long, it really did serve them well. In 2001, the price of Apple products continued to increase as well as their popularity, and they needed a logo color to match it. They came out with this glass-looking logo. It was classy and sophisticated. And as a side note, it didn't look too bad on the back of the new iPod, which came out in that year. By 2007, renewability was one of the words of the day. And with the launch of the game-changing iPhone, they tweaked the logo color a little bit and came out with this, the Chrome version. This was used until 2015. Then it was changed again to the most recent redesign, which takes us to right now. 
we see they've gone back to the more minimalistic approach. Depending on the product you buy, you may get a white logo as shown here. Okay, we can tweak it. There you go. Or you can get a black one or a silver one. What could potentially happen for the future? Might they bring back an updated version of the beloved multicolored rainbow logo? Only time will tell. As we think of Apple and the continued innovation of all of its products, we can't overlook the significance of the different colors in the logo that made it so recognizable over the years. How have the colors of the Apple logo changed over the years? You can see that the logo changed as the company continued to grow and branch out in new and different directions. Which logo is your favorite? Where do you think they'll go next? Let us know in the comments. We hope you enjoyed our episode of Color Commentators. I am Brandon Kurtzbach. Please remember to like, listen, and share some time with your friends at Pros Pondering Paint.